it was a great fit for me to come to Gettysburg because I knew that I'd be able to interact with the undergraduate population just the way I wanted to and had in the past. Um, but it was also a great place to do the kind of research that I wanted to do, partly because of the, the support for it here and also the fact that I could continue to do brain imaging research at the University of Pennsylvania, which is not too far down the road. My main area of research is on uh, visual processing, how we look out in the visual world and understand what we're seeing. And there's kind of two aspects of that that I'm interested in. One is how we look at the everyday objects around us and know what it is that they are and what we're seeing. So a coffee cup, how do we know that that's a coffee cup? And how do we remember that this is my coffee cup and not somebody else's? And even if we see it in a funny lighting or at a different angle than it's normally uh, presented to us, how do we know what it is? Um, and so part of my work is on just basic understanding of that visual process. The other uh, area of my research is on visual attention. So how do we look out in the world and decide what to pay attention to, what to focus on. We're bombarded by information from all directions and we can't process it all. We have to decide to focus on some subset of that information and how does your brain do that? The kind of research that I do with functional brain imaging, um, it's a very labor intensive process. It can be very expensive. Um, and so I don't like to sit on data for a long period of time, um, especially when students are involved in the project and I want them to see the project come full circle and, and, and hopefully be published before they graduate or not long after they graduate. So that sort of forces me to constantly be thinking about when I'm gonna present this to a larger audience. The first thing I do is try to decide what would be the big take home message that I want somebody to get when they read my article. And my students come, sometimes they joke that I'm too much into take home messages, but uh, many people when they read an article, they don't remember all the details, they just remember the one big take home message. And so I try to find what's the one result in all of this data that I have that would be the kind of most logical take home message and, and frame the rest of the paper around that. The lab courses that I teach, we often focus on research that's very much related to the kind of research that I'm doing in my lab and so there's a really great intersection and the kinds of projects that the students do in that lab class often inform what I do in my own experiments and what I'm doing in the lab will kind of come out in the classes and the kinds of things that I teach about and so um, they, they really do help each other and uh, when I'm thinking about an idea for experiment I'll run that by students in the classes and get their feedback, which is wonderful. And often the projects that the students do in the classes serve as a, as a pilot experiment for a larger project that I'll then take and, and, and continue after they're gone. Um, so sometimes it is hard to balance them, but often there's a kind of wonderful sort of uh, overlap that, that, that's, that's great. I, I went to a liberal arts college as an undergraduate and loved the experience, and I loved the close relationship with the faculty. Uh, and when I went to graduate school and in my postdoc, I was at big research institutions and uh, didn't quite have that level of interaction with the students. And that was always important to me and I knew I wanted to have that kind of interaction. I loved teaching. I loved being in front of students and uh, seeing their eyes open when they learn about some new theory. It is very exciting because uh, not only does it allow us to do more and more intricate uh, analyses of brain imaging data, but we can do uh, incredible sorts of computer simulations of the brain, of neural networks, of how uh, different kinds of cognitive processes work. Um, we can use computer technology to pour through large amounts of uh, data and look for statistical regularities and other sorts of things that just would be impossible, even with computer technology the way it is today, it's only, you know, just beginning uh, to kind of emerge.